Hello everyone, today I want to talk to you about the new contraption that DHH has created for us. This time it's going to be the Rails docked uh, thing on, on GitHub repository, words are hard. Uh, what this is going to allow us to do is to very quickly set up a development environment on a new Linux installation, which will also work for WSL on Windows. So if you're on Windows, this will work for you. You can dev just like everyone else. To get started, first thing you want to do is get WSL set up. To do that, you click your little Windows icon, search for features, turn Windows features on or off. And then you want to come down here and you want to click the little checkbox for the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux and potentially the hypervisor and the virtual machine platform, although I'm not sure about those two. Uh, there's tutorials that cover this. It's like five minutes on YouTube. Just go find one of those. Once you have that, you can then come over to the Windows Store and in the Windows Store, you can just search for whatever you want to install, basically. So if you want to install like Ubuntu, you just search for Ubuntu and you go to 22.04 and you click the little install button or the add button. Once you have that, you probably also want to grab the Windows Terminal just to save yourself some sanity. Uh, and then you can go ahead and install that. Now the Windows Terminal is nice because if we come down here, after we have the 22.04 installed, we can click the little drop down and we can just move over to that. And now we have a brand new uh, installation here. I can test this. Let me do like a Ruby dash V. Of course, that means we also don't have a Rails version. Uh, and we also don't have anything with Docker related. So how do we get Docker? Well, you come over to docker.com. You scroll down a little bit. You click the little download button. You now have Docker on your system. But of course, I had it already and it's not working. So why isn't this working? Well, to enable it, we have to click the little cog wheel. Come over to the uh, resources and the WSL integration. Do the checkbox for whatever we just installed, which in my case is 22.04. Apply and restart. Close this. Open it up again. Hit F11. Hit Control Plus a bunch of times. And now if I do a Docker command, you'll see that we have all of our Docker commands appearing here, which is pretty cool. So now we can use Docker. Let's see what the docked repository is all about. I'm going to CD into a uh, little folder structure I made here just to be organized. And in here, we'll do a uh, Rails, or not a Rails new, we'll do a make dir uh, first project. We'll, uh, we'll CD, or oh, let me do this. Let me do a uh, sudo cho dean colon dean for uh, dash r, and then we'll just set this for the uh, dot slash, or the slash code YouTube directory, or maybe even just the code directory. I, I really just don't want to deal with this. All right, there we go. And now we should be good to make a directory without having to do that. So let's CD into our first project. And now let's try to uh, set this up. So if we come over to the doc repo, scroll down a little bit, we can do a, uh, we can just copy this first command, copy, right click to paste, run it. It creates a volume for us. If we come over here into our Docker stuff, we can come to the volumes and we now have a Ruby bundle cache created, which is pretty cool. Uh, next step, let's run the second command and take a look at what this does. So what this command does is, uh, oops, it is completely butchered by my GUI. Uh, it creates an alias for the docked command. So now we can use docked as a command, which will do a Docker run with an interactive terminal with a mounted volume for the current directory, which is going to be our Rails directory. And it mounts that to slash Rails inside of the Docker container. Now, of course, anything in the Docker container gets deleted when the container shuts down, unless it's a mounted volume. So all the changes in that container will work because it's being put into the current working directory, which will be a Rails project. So you can see we make a change in the Rails project. It goes into the Rails project on our actual computer. Uh, so our Docker container doesn't cause everything to like disappear. We then have the Ruby bundle cache, which is the slash bundle in the Docker container. And then it just runs this as port 3000, which it has to pass in as 3000 colon 3000 because we have to take the uh, host 3000 on our main machine and sort of like tunnel it to the Docker container. Uh, and then it does whatever this uh, Rails CLI thing is here. Don't know, don't care, we run that. Okay, so let's, let's create a Rails project, right? We still don't have Rails, Rails dash V. Still don't have Ruby, Ruby dash V. Definitely don't have our RVM, thank God. Let's do a docked Rails new video and uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and we'll run that. And there you go, it's working. Just out of the box, that was what, four and a half minutes and we have a working Rails project. 
Now, this is like part of a bigger push by DHH, it seems, to get Docker more deeply integrated into Rails. So there is a 7.1 change that we'll talk about in a second, we talked about it in a previous video, that causes 7.1 projects to come with a Docker file. Now this one right here is a 7.0 Rails project, so if I CD into whatever we just called this, uh, CD into video, if I CD into here and we do a uh, nano for the gem file, we can see this is using Ruby 3.1, uh, among some other stuff. So if we wanted to create like a scaffold, we're just going to have to prefix all the Rails commands with the doc commands. So we can say ra docked Rails G scaffold post with a title and a body of type text, and maybe like some views of type integer, just to do something different for once. We'll do a docked Rails DB colon migrate command. And I'm actually gonna hit F11 while I run some of these because I think it's good to see what's happening. So our bundle cache is now up to 111 megs. But if we come over to our containers, you'll see there's no container running. But if I do something like a Rails C, oops, a docked Rails C, you can see it runs this container. But uh, as soon as we do anything in here, like we have our posts. So we'll say post.create uh, with a title of hello and a body of world and uh, I don't know, views of, of 12, right? So that creates it. And now if I hit control D, you'll see the container shuts down. So is our post okay? Well, yes, because it's a mounted volume, of course. Uh, but what we can do is we can say, let's do like a Rails S or a docked Rails S. And anytime we run a command, you see that this starts running again. If we go over to localhost port 3000, we have the uh, server working. Let's go to slash posts. And there's our uh, post right there. So let's take a look at how we could uh, maybe make the views increment every time we look at a post, just to sort of cap this off. Let's do a nano app slash uh, controller slash posts controller. Come down to the show action. And in here, I think it's like at post dot increment the views by, uh, I don't know, just colon views maybe. I think is how this is done. Uh, I haven't done this from the command line in quite some time, and it looks like it doesn't like the uh, <laughs> it doesn't like that. Okay, so let's do a sudo nano for app slash controllers slash post controller, and unfortunately, it looks like the docked commands do run everything as sudo, which is kind of cringe, uh, but that's okay. Something like that, and now let's try to do a uh, docked Rails s and see what happens. Come over here refresh, we'll click show, and now it's incrementing every time we visit this page. You'll see this is running. We can stop it and it stops running. Of course, if we run another command like a docked uh, bundle add device, you'll see that that causes this to run while the command runs. And then as soon as it finishes doing the bundle add, you'll see that this once again stops. So the container goes away. So now let's do a bundle or a docked device colon oops docked rails g device colon install command it'll run that then we can do a docked uh, rails g device user just like that and now we can do a docked rails s this does take some getting used to uh, there is an option to alias all of your commands so your rails command to docked rails your rails dash dev to docked bin slash dev that said, um, I'm not really a fan of this because it, it sort of like obscures the fact that we are using this this alias to run everything. So I, I'm just going to keep it with like the doc commands. It's also a bit more straightforward for, for newer devs. Uh, but okay, we just did that. Let's come over here. Let's go to slash users slash sign in. We have to run some migrations. We can click that button. Works just like you would expect. And now we can create a user account. Sign up. Dean at example.com with a password of password. Oops. Password. And I'll copy this because if we click sign up, we do have to configure this a little bit to make it work. So I'll just go back, paste this in. It did create the account. It just errors out. And now I'm logged in. So now we can go to slash posts uh, slash one if we want to. That's working. And we can display that user real quick as a final touch. So let's do a uh, let's do a sudo nano for uh, app slash views slash posts slash underscore post and oops underscore post dot html dot erb and at the top here we'll just do a 
uh, a current underscore user and dot email, something like that. And then we can do a docked rails s refresh the page and there's our user email so we can see we're logged in uh, and that's working just how you would expect let's go ahead and destroy this post because we're petty people but yeah i just wanted to cover this the docked repo is is really cool uh, i'll have a link to it in the video description i'll also have a link to the docker website if you don't know how to go to docker.com or you don't feel like doing it uh, and yeah hopefully this was uh, interesting hopefully this was helpful if you're a newer dev and you're trying to get up and running but nothing seems to work uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.